Hey guys, I did, um, I just saw that I have this, still kind of have some eyeliner on. We did Roxy and the Foxy then last night, and it was the final episode. It didn't get voted back next week. It's a shame. It was fun while it lasted, playing Vera. Um, I wonder what my next, my next role will be, what I'll move on to from here. And also, I, uh, I bought a hard drive, another one, 250 gigs. I used some Best Buy gift certificates that I had. It's awesome, like 70 bucks worth of gift certificates. It was a $99 hard drive, so I only had to spend about 30 out of pocket. I've had a, I had a really, really big realization a couple days ago, yesterday, yesterday. Um, some of it, a lot of it is uh, due to this interaction I've been having with Gary, Burn Victim 77, Gary, um, kind of like talking to each other through videos. I realized first off, like you can't really like, we're not communicating with each other, Gary. You know, vid posting videos in response to each other, that's not, that's not communication, it's just like, you know, it's an idea, and then an idea, and then it's like two ideas going like this. So th I realized that, but beyond that, I, I realized I'm, I'm not listening as much as I think I am, or I, as much as I thought I was. Uh, before I go on, I, I have to say, Rivermark, get a fucking webcam. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing about you from Textland. There's this guy on here named Rivermark, is his account. He's been talking about how he wants to get a webcam, but but he doesn't. He's afraid of it, or if it's just making him nervous, or what. Help me get this fellow Mark to get a webcam, please, please. Uh, okay, back to my point about. I see. I diverted because I don't want to think about how I don't listen. It's it's. I do listen. I just don't listen enough. I haven't been listening to people. It was apparent to me in that my it rehearsal for the show for Roxy and the Foxy Den, Amanda's directing it, and uh, she kept telling me to speak up, but the audience couldn't hear me for like the last two weeks, and I just wasn't. I just said, you know what, it's cool, they don't have to hear every word you say to make it interesting, that was my rationale. You know, I said, if every audience member gets at least one interesting moment, then it's real, they like it, doesn't matter if you're looking at them, doesn't matter how you sound, but I realized I just didn't want to change. So I, I listened yesterday to her when she told me that it wasn't loud enough. I really listened and I think I listened because of Gary because of this interaction that we have with Gary and realizing like neither one of us are listening to each other. I know I wasn't listening to him, I was just reacting. And it's so hard to listen for like seven minutes to a video and then respond to it. Like you gotta take notes, but then that gets all cumbersome and like you're not really responding. That's why like that the communication is really good. And I wanna get on MSN with Gary, but he was saying he didn't have the capability of using his uh, video camera, which fucking sucks. Um, I, I am not listening as much as I want to be. So I have been thinking a lot today about what people have been saying about emotion. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to redefine the word. You know, I do know why. I, because I think that there are different types of emotion. There's like reactionary emotion that comes and goes, and then there's like that core emotion, the spirit, the soul, whatever people want to call it. That love and pain, that pain that because, like, in order to feel pain, you have to accept. It's like acceptance, you know? You have to accept your situation. And people don't want to accept their situation. I think people tend to want to go think about other things than what exactly is going on right now. What exactly we're feeling. And that's the acceptance. That's the love. And the pain. Because it's painful to accept your situation. It's painful for me to accept my situation that I wasn't listening that I was closing people out. 
And I was reacting out of anger. That's why I was getting so edgy. That's why I left that fucking belligerent video to Gary. Um, so... Alright, fine. Fine, you people. Anger is an emotion. Textbook definition, anger is a type of emotion. And joy and happiness are emotions. But then what I say now, that being said, that anger is an emotion, I think that we as human beings have to learn how to control our emotions and not let our emotions control us. There's no reason that, you, that we get angry and we say, oh, you pissed me off. Because I tell you, in different days and different times, you're going to react differently to what they said. That specific external stimulus. We're going to have a different reaction based on how we feel. And I think that we have control over that. I think that we can not get angry if we don't, you know, if we, if we recognize what's happening and see it as like, oh, I'm reacting emotionally. We don't have to react emotionally. Not necessarily. I mean, we do, but we don't have to just give it. We don't have to give into it. We can acknowledge it and, and it express it and talk about like I'm angry and then and delve into it. why why am I getting so angry right now what what am I avoiding because I think the reactionary emotions like anger and laughter and like even when people laugh like if someone says something and everyone laugh, like people say oh I don't know what's better getting drunk or killing myself and everyone just laughs truth is there's nothing funny about that we laugh because we don't want to think about it you know People laugh for lots of reasons, but I think when we're laughing in a situation, it's because we're not really delving into it any more than just that surface level. Wait, that's a little kind of... I don't want to get into all about laughter and why we do all, why we laugh, but I think the reason that we f that we laugh at jokes is because it's disassociation and we don't want to think about reality. So it's easier to laugh. Like, on... John Stewart, when uh, Clinton said something about how Bush, he was like, well, we all know how we feel about this current administration. Everyone just laughed. And I was like, God, why do people laugh? It's because they don't want to think about it. They don't want to experience it. They don't want to accept their reality. They don't want to feel the pain of the situation, which is we're being totally manipulated and taken advantage of. So anger, it's an emotional response. That's fine. I'm not going to try and reinvent words. I don't know what my fucking deal is. I'm not... I, I'm pushing. I'm pushing the envelope. I want to explore because I think people bastardize it when they say, "Oh, my well, my mom's emotional. She just gets all emotional because she gets angry a lot." Not my mom in particular, but Amanda was saying about her mom, saying she's a really emotional. But I think like I think she gets angry because she doesn't want to experience another kind of emotion, which is pain, which is acceptance accepting the situation. She would rather not think about it, so she gets pissed off. And I think that we have control over that. More control than we realize. I know that I have more control than I ever thought possible. And I'm not saying don't react, because when someone says something you feel anger, don't keep it in. But react. Express what you're thinking about the anger, but, but then delve into it. Get it? Why are you angry? Don't just feel angry and scream and we have more control. I'm repeating myself a lot, but this is a big thing for me. This is a big realization for me. and I'm, I think in order to find balance, we have to experience the extremes. And that's kind of what I've been doing the last few weeks. Last week in particular. You can't find balance if you don't experience the extremes. You can't learn to balance the extremes if you've never experienced them. We have to let go a little bit. And check out the unknown see if it's actually all that bad if it's as bad as everyone makes it out to be because I don't think it is I think we have more control than that I think it only seems bad until we experience it and then we realize it's just like everything else what I'm saying I'm talking about the unknown whatever that may be open relationship the, the most terrifying word words in the world to hear I want an open relationship. I don't want to be a swinger. I don't want to have sex with a bunch of people. I'm not talking about that. It's about a state of emotional openness where I have the freedom to do what I want. 
and to say what I want. And Amanda has the freedom to do what she wants and say what she wants. And neither one of us are ever going to take that away from the other person. I mean, neither of us are capable of taking that away from the other person. But neither one of us are going to... I, I want a situation where neither of us will, neither one of us will put guilt on the other person for experiencing, you know, traveling, having emotions, having relationships, all this stuff. I'm not about that. I'm not gonna. I want people to have the respect for themselves. Respect. That's another word that I don't like because people misuse it. I think people say you don't respect me, but in truth. You have to allow people to say what they want and what they think. And that's the respect that you have to allow people. What they say to you, that's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with respect. You have to accept what they're saying. You have to listen. You have to show them respect by listening. You have to dignify what they think is real. You, you have to do this. I have to do this. You don't have to do this. I have to do this. I have to dignify that what people are saying is very real. And none of these comments are bullshit or fake. Because we're all real people with real beliefs and they're all different styles of belief, but we all have like that emotional thread, you know? All right, man. Feel it. I'll see you.